All right, in this video, we're gonna look at the, uh, the concept and an example of particle equilibrium. So uh, let me write that down, particle equilibrium. And uh, important to say that this is within the context of statics. When you look at dynamics, you're gonna see that you can also have the dynamic equilibrium, but that, that will be for another course. All right, so the, the main idea when you have a particle is that the particle is going to be in equilibrium if the sum of the forces is equal to zero. That's it. So that's, that's all the concepts that we're gonna study in this video. Um, easy, right? Now, to better demonstrate that, uh, let me do an example, because I think, I think this is better explained through an example. And in this example, I'm going to start with a free body diagram. So if you're not sure about these free body diagrams, make sure to watch the video about free body diagrams before this one. But we already have a free body diagram that has been developed for us. And this free body diagram has a particle A and this particle A, let me put it somewhere in here. Uh, we have our X axis going in this direction we have our y-axis going in this direction, and then we have a force F2 right here. And the magnitude of that force F2 is five kilonewtons. We have a force F3 going in this direction. And the magnitude of that is six kilonewtons and here we have an angle of 40 degrees. And over here, we have an angle of theta, which is unknown, and a force F1, which is unknown. And what we're trying to find is to find the magnitude of F1, right, and the angle theta, right? And again, here we're assuming that the particle A is in equilibrium and that is particle A that is in equilibrium. All right, so very good. So the first thing, and, you know, and, and the nice thing about this type of problems is it really connects the rest of the concepts that we're seeing uh, through the semester. So the first thing that I want to do is to take all of these forces and I got write those in Cartesian vector form. Um, so um, let me start with force F1. Well, I don't know anything about force F1. So what I can say is that the force F1 in Cartesian vector form is going to be an F1x, which I don't know, I plus F1yj. Now you might be asking yourself, shouldn't that be negative because the force is going negative? Well, yeah, you can put it negative, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it, leave it as positive, and then I'm, I'm going to expect my answer for those F1x and FYI, FYY F1y to be negative. Again, the reason is because this F1 is going in negative uh, compared to the x and the y axis, right? It's going in this direction. So I will expect those two uh, to be negative. Very good. Okay, let's look at um, this uh, force F2. So what do we do with that force F2? Well, force F2, just by inspecting it, we can say that that is 5j in kilonewtons, right? Very good. And force three, now we have that angle of 40 degrees. Uh, so we can say that this F3 is going to be equal to, let's see, the magnitude is six and the angle is 40 degrees. So it's going to be six cosine of 40 I minus six sine of 40 J, and this is also in kilonewtons. 
that will give me a value of 4.596i minus 3.857j again in kilonewtons. Very good. So I have my forces in Cartesian vector form. Now what I need to do is write my equations of equilibrium, or my equation of equilibrium. So for equilibrium, I have that my sum of all of these forces has to be equal to zero, right? So that's F1 plus F2 plus F3 is equal to zero, all right? All right so I'm gonna have uh, that this F1 plus F2 plus F3 is equal to zero. And that will be equal to, and then what, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit a, gonna, going to go ahead and have I and J as common factors, as unit vectors, right? And um, what we're gonna see is that for my F1X, uh, for my F1, I have F1XI, so that will be equal to F1. Uh, for my F2, I have nothing, right? So plus zero. For my F3, I have 4.596 plus 4.596i, very good. And now my J, uh, for my F1, we have F, um, F1 and G. F1, Y, which I don't know. Plus for F2, we have this five kilonewtons. And for my F3, we have this minus 3857 kilonewtons. That should be equal to zero. All right, if that is equal to zero, what means is that the items in the brackets should be equal to zero, right? By the way, and uh, please don't get confused uh, with what I'm just going to say. This is equivalent of just uh, dotting this summation with I and dotting that summation with J. Uh, and then what you end up with is this items over here equal to zero and these numbers are here equal to zero. So with this, we can say that my F1, F1x will be equal to minus 4.596. Uh, why negative? Because we have this equal to zero, so I'm gonna put the 4.596 in the other, uh, uh, the other side of the equal sign. Kilonewtons, right? Remember units. And my F1y is going to be equal to um, 5 minus 3.850, so negative, that will be minus 1.143 in kilonewtons. Very good. Okay, so now I can write this in Cartesian vector form. I can express my answer like this, minus 4.5. 596i minus 1.143j. I'm still using four significant digits because I'm, I don't have my final answers. Um, and as I expected, both of them are negative. So this looks about right. At least, at least it looks about, about the right um, direction at least. All right, so the problem is asking for my magnitude, my magnitude of F1 is going to be equal to the square root of 4.596 square plus 1.143 square. And that will give me 4.74 with three significant digits. That's gonna be one of my answers. And then the angle, the angle, let's go back here to this drawing over here. 
I want to show you something. So the angle, I'm just going to take this as a triangle, right? This side and this side, I'm going to use the inverse tangent. Since I'm going to take it as triangle, I need to take the positive values of this. So this length and this length, and those lengths are going to be positive, okay? So I can say that my theta is my inverse tangent of my opposite, right? My opposite, my opposite will be this distance over here which we calculated to be 1.143, 1.143 over the adjacent, which is this 4.596, and that gives me equal to 14.0, 14.0 degrees with four significant digits. So that's our, those are my two answers. The magnitude of that vector F1 is 4.74, and then the angle is 14 degrees. All right, but um, I want you to go back and really review uh, the main topic for today. And it's, it's very, very simple, right? The sum of the forces is equal to zero, and that's going to be your particle equilibrium. Of course, uh, one thing that I uh, need to emphasize here is the fact that we started with the free body diagram, and this creation of this free body di diagram is extremely important. If you don't have the correct free body diagram for your problem, uh, you, won't, you will not be able to write your forces correctly, and you will not be able to then write your uh, equilibrium equations correctly. Uh, so just pay attention uh, to that free body diagram.